Hi everyone, uh, my name is Danny, and um, for those who don't know, um, I do all types of YouTube videos, and um, I just wanted to just make just a, just a little quick note and say that, um, yeah, there's indeed um, a lot of crazy things going on in this world. You know, first we had the coronavirus, and now um, in recent weeks, um, the uh, George Floyd protests. So there's just a lot of uh, a lot of chaos going on around the world. Um, I just find, for example, that for me, movies are, are a good escape for all of it, and so. Um, that's why sometimes I, I like to watch movies and, and review them so I can share my thoughts and I can, you know, hopefully reach out to other people who've seen the movie or who want to see it and um, make some connections with those people. Um, so, so like I said, I make all types of YouTube videos and um, first of all, I just wanted to say that like, um, I, although I've made like a lot of these types of um, kind of sit down YouTube videos, it's, it's always a learning experience and I'm always getting better at it because they, what they say is practice makes perfect, right? So sometimes it's just little things that you, know, you notice when, when I go back and rewatch the video or people tell me stuff. It's kind of like when you're in any type of you know, um, speaking engagement, whether it's teaching and stuff, a lot of the times the problem is, is the speaker doesn't really like speak loud enough, right? Or there's, there's stuff in the background, there's noises in the background or whatever, for whatever reason, right? But that, a lot of that results in like the listen, the, the audience not being able to hear the speaker either at properly or even at all and you know that's one of the things that you always always have to avoid and so um i was always told for example that like there is no such thing as when you're speaking too loud because it's better to be too loud than lo not loud enough so that's why kind of like when i speak you know i have my my voice elevated like this and, and I also want to just say from the beginning that like I've also learned from these types of videos that like and watching them after that a lot of the times when I would just kind of spontaneously jump in front of the camera um, when I would look back at the video I would notice that I would, I would forget things right that I wanted to include in the video right so a lot of those things were pretty important stuff right and so that was bad for me to forget those things or you know the the video the dialogue in the video just wasn't organized well enough right it wasn't cohesive enough right it didn't flow well enough so in order to avoid all of that it's i've i've for me i found what helps is to be able to write things down right so in writing everything down you know it sort of just helps with that um, although I do understand that it's, it's not a good thing to just be staring down at a bunch of papers, right? And so that's something that I'm working at too, right? So I just want to say that like, you know, before I make these videos, I prepare everything. And so like when I'm looking down and reading these notes, these are notes that I made in preparation as to, you know, the content of the video. So that's just what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, um, I was saying that, um, I do make all types of, all types of YouTube videos. Um, and for the last few videos, um, I reviewed, um, all of the Star Wars movies except Rogue One and Solo. I was going to review both of these movies at the same time, but Solo is only being released on Disney Plus on July 10, on July 10, 2020. So I will review Rogue One in this video. Um, I will review Solo after I watch it um, in July. 
So um, just before I forget, um, I, I've always said this because I'm proud of you know some of the, the, the artifacts, if you will, or the memorabilia that I, that I collect, right? So like this is one of my favorite posters in back of me, right? The logo here is 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 Star Wars, Star Wars: The Force Awakens. That's a you know one of my favorite movies, and that was reviewed um, previously. And if you want to check that out, it's it's on my my YouTube uh, in my YouTube videos. And this here is um, my Darth Vader um, memorabilia. And so, um, if I believe, I, have, I just want to make sure that I have everything um, factual. But in that famous scene where in the Empire Strikes Back, where he duels with Luke Skywalker, and um, they're on that uh, typical Star Wars um, uh, structure, you know, like the long heightened poles with the illumination starts way back in, in the first movies right and then you see here where those um, structures are cut off if you remember in Star Wars movie he um, slices those off with his his lightsaber and then here um, he's actually um, telling Luke um, that he is his father or something like that and so actually this um, this piece of memorabilia actually it, it's supposed to if when you press a button and, and it's supposed to have the actual Darth Vader noise uh, voice and it says something like um, Luke I am your father together we can rule the universe together like he says in the Empire Strikes Back but um, it used to work a lot and um, now it doesn't I think there's just you know once it anything gets old it gets glitchy and stuff like that but Maybe eventually I'll get it working. Um, I was hoping that would, I could get it working for you guys um, today, but it's still not working. But it's still nice to look at as, as like a memorabilia type thing, right? Very nice, very nice. So, like I was saying, um, um, okay. First of all, I just wanted to say that, like, I'm not, I'm not even a fan of sequels in general, right? Um, however, the Star Wars prequels and sequels were very well done. Initially, the initially the idea of Rogue One as an additional movie didn't seem relevant or appealing to me at all, taking away from the base movies. But the more I thought about it, about how the Rebel Alliance actually got the Death Star plans and the, the, and the story surrounding it seemed more and more intriguing to me. So let's get right into it um, from start to finish. I really like the reprogrammed Imperial droid, the um, K2SO. Um, I thought this droid looked a bit more advanced than the other typical Star Wars droids, with a more with a more powerful with a more powerful looking structure, with more intellect along with the typical evil appearance of the dark side. Forrest Whitaker's character of Saw Gerrera was impressive. Guerrero's robotic limbs, his Darth Vader respirator, and unique personality was appealing to me. A good addition, a good, a good addition to diversity in the cast was the blind spiritual warrior. I'm trying to. I hope I pronounce this right. Chirrut 
Imwe and his mercenary friend Baines Malbus. Malbus remind me of Mongol Mongolian warriors, but with advanced weapons. And Imwe's martial arts skills and spiritual forces callings, spiritual forces callings were refreshing. Um, I also found that the bond between them is a reminder of how people of the same ethnicities can very easily bond to each other. I found the idea. I found the idea of. I found the idea of. I hope I pronounce this right again. I found the idea of Kyber crystals being the power source of lightsabers, and the Death Star was his hell room. It was. It was very interesting that the Imperials. That it was very interesting that the Imperial Imperials chose to extract Kyber crystals for the Death Star from. Jedi. <clears throat> I also found that the, the scene of the scene of Darth Vader in his water tank was interesting. It was it, it was similar to a previous Star Wars uh, movie in which Luke Skywalker was similarly rehabilitated in a water tank, although Darth Vader's tank was more scenic and um, a little more graphic but graphic on the interesting side so um, Jimmy Jimmy Smith's reprising his role of Bale Organ sorry again I hope I pronounce this right Jimmy Smith's reprising his role of Bale Organa was very meaningful to me I could never understand his major role in Revenge of the Sith, but it makes sense now that his role was important due to raising Princess Leia and influence her in, in influence her influencing her into being a Rebel Alliance leader. You know, in Organa's scene, he clarified that he was requesting help from Obi-Wan, as well as Leia, which bridges episode four to this movie so, so perfectly. I like the actual Imperial, I like the, I like the actual Imperial data bank on the planet Scarab. This well organized, the, the, the well organized plans, the well organized plans were so perfectly placed in such a ultra secure high tech setting in a place resembling previous Star Wars movies. Like I said, um, with those classic high elevations um, of mountable poles. In extravagant lighting settings. I also found that the basic storyline of scientist Galen Galen Urso secretly changing sides and and um, yeah. The basic storyline of scientist Galen Urso secretly changing sides and was very interesting. And the way that he basically um, put a bomb into the Death Star with plant with um, with and made those plans was what I still think is just brilliant.
another thing I noticed is how very different Darth Vader was in this movie. His voice, his mannerisms, even his gait were all unsimilar to his previous movies. This was done on purpose, perhaps, um, to mark the beginning of a new era. Even the final scene bridged the gap so perfectly. The hard disk of the plans clarified how it later went into R2-D2. Leia's presence in the small starship helped clarify her role in gathering the plants. However, it still is a bit confusing to me how she was completely hidden in that mission in addition to the movie during that whole time. Even the mention of preparing escape pods clarified R2, D2, and C-3PO being in escape pods in episode 4. One thing I need to mention is that although Rogue One ends with with an inspirational ending, with Vader seemingly losing, although not showing Leia's... What did I, what did I write here? One thing I need... One thing I need to mention is that although Rogue One ends with an inspirational ending with Vader seemingly losing, although not showing Leia's escaping, star star escaping starship, <clears throat> although not showing Leia's escaping starship, had to have been captured Vader just a few moments later. Okay. So what I'm what I what I wrote down there was, um, what I wrote down there was, um, at the end of the movie, it was a very emotional, um, inspirational ending. You know how, um, at the ending, if you remember, one of the uh, people on the alliance hands over the disc, the hard disc to Leia, and then Leia says something like. Um, um, and then he, he asked her, what are, what are these, what is this disc for? And then she says, this disc is for, is for hope or a new hope or something like that. And it ends like that, right? So if, if you look at, if you look at the timeline of all of the movies, right? Um, even though it ends like that, um, she gets captured just a few moments after that by um by darth vader right um just probably just a few minutes after that um darth vader captures her captures that ship and her right um so really um the other alternative would have been for Leia's starship to have returned to the um, Rebel Alliance headquarters. Then, for some reason, Leia would later um, board a starship with the plans without copying them to anybody, making the plans an easy target to get. That would essentially be stupid for her and the, and the Alliance to do so, so that could have happened uh, that could have happened but did not happen so it was a bit strange to think Leia and her starship were captured just moments after the movie um, Rogue One ended also 
also, I wanted to mention how worldwide costume design and cinematography bridged perfectly with episode four, including including those nineteen seventies imperial and rebel uniforms, amongst many other things. So, um, in general, in general. I really, I really like the movie a lot, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone. So as I said before, um, at this point, um, the only Star Wars movie that I haven't seen yet is, is Solo, and I'll review it um, when I see it, and that'll be sometime in July, um, in July when it's released in sometime in July when it's finally released on Disney Plus. So I'm just going to wrap this up and because uh, I don't want this this video to go on too long. So I'm just going to wrap up the video and say um, yeah like I said I um, I really enjoy movies and I love connecting to other people um, who have seen the movie and stuff. Um, so I just wanted to say thanks a lot for watching this movie and um sorry thanks a lot for thanks thanks a lot for watching this video and thanks a lot for watching all my youtube videos and uh, make sure that you hit the subscribe button right so click on that subscribe button uh, for the notifications click on all notifications so that as soon as i um so that as soon as i post no post a new video you'll know and so you can watch it so that by the time you watch it won't be out it won't be outdated and uh, um, just a reminder is that the, for me everybody goes through different phases in YouTube so I'm still at a phase where like I still need a certain amount of subscribers right so for me at this phase in my YouTube career um, I'm looking at my subscriber count, right? And so I have to see that subscriber count go up on a regular fair amount. And so that's signaling to me, you know, whether I should make other videos or, you know, how many more videos I'll be making them or to what extent and what regularity or whatever. So that's why um, it's, it's just very important for people to subscribe, right? And so um, I think that's about it. And so I'm gonna wrap it up and uh, yeah, may the force be with you.